Hello, this is Isaac Mayo, and I'm going to go over the Algebra, Algebra 1 Workbook Common Core Standards Edition, August 2015 book by Topical Review Book Company. Um, so, for part 1, it says answer all 24 questions in this part. Each correct answer will receive two credits, no partial credit will be allowed. For each statement or question, choose the word or expression that of those given best completes the statements or answers the question. Record your answers in the space provided. So obviously as you can see to the right over here that the multiple choice questions. For this video I'm only going to go do questions one through five because I feel it would be more effective to do more amount of teaching rather than just busting through all 24 questions. So there will be multiple series to these videos. Um, so to begin with, let's start with question one, because that's where you usually start. So given the graph of the line represented by the equation f of x equals negative 2x plus b, if b is increased by 4 units, the graph of the new line will be shifted 4 units to the right, up, to the left, or down. And we know that the standard form is y equals mx plus b. Oh man, that's a terrible plus m. And we also know that m equals the slope and that b equals the y-intercepts. So by default, if we look at a graph, we know that the y's is vertical axis. And if you move on the y-axis, it's going to be up or down. So right away we can eliminate number 1 and 3, which is right. I guess I can draw on that. Well, anyway, we cannot use right or left. So it must be either up or down. And we see that it's a positive sign in this f of x equals negative 2x plus b. So if it's plus b, we know that it's going to be shifted up. Because positive sign means up, negative sign equals down. So our answer is 4, down. I hope everybody got that. So for question number 2, I don't know how to just clear this. So let's just backspace it. Number two, we have Rowan has $50 in the savings jar and is putting in $5 every week. So we can write $50 plus 5x. And the reason why we can do that 5x is because it's going to be $5 per every week. And per usually means multiplication. In this, in this case, when the weeks increase, so after one week will be 5, two weeks it will be 10, and after x weeks, was 5x. And Jonah, he has $10 in the jar. And he's putting in $15 a week.
and again after one week, 15. After two, 30. And then x is 15x. So the question is, each of them plots his progress on a graph with time on the horizontal axis and the amount in the jar on the vertical. So if we want to make a quick graph, we know it's only going to be positive. So this is time in weeks, and this is the monies. Not very good at straight lines here. Anyway. So we know that Rowan is going to start at like 50, which is going to be up here. In five, it's going to go like here, 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 here. Whereas Jonah, he's going to start all the way down here at like 10. But he's going to jump up 15 each week. So he's going to be 25, and then 50, and then he's going to keep going. So his line's going to look like this. And Rowan's line is going to look like this. So the question asks, which statement about their graphs is true? Is Rowan's graph steeper than Jonah's? Well, Rowan is in green. And then Jonah is in red. And we can see that Jonah's is steeper because it has a bigger slope, as you can see with this 15x, opposed to this 5x. So we know that Rowan's graph does not lie above Jonah's because Jonah's quickly overtakes us. And we also know that Jonah's graph does not always lie above Rowan's because it, it is lost right here, right? So by default, Jonah's graph has a steeper slope, and we can also see that it climbs way higher than Rowan's. And also, we can also just look at the slopes right here. So on to three. Should really figure it out. Oh, All right, so let's go to question three. To watch a varsity basketball game, spectators must buy a ticket. The door, the adult ticket is three dollars, and the cost of student is one fifty. So we can say three dollars per ticket equals adult, and we can say that. 150 or 1.5 x equals student. I'll put the st so we don't confuse with the dollar sign on accident. The number of adult tickets sold is represented by a, and the student tickets are sold by s. Which expression represents the amount of money collected at the door for the ticket from the ticket sales? So as we can see, we already have this 3x is adult and 1.5x equals student. And we know that they're going to the game together. So we can just say a plus st equals total. And if we want to substitute those in, we would have 3x or 3a, whichever you prefer, plus 
1.5x equals the total. So our answer would be number four. Three dollars times a plus dollar fifty times s because we want to find the total amount of tickets sold. So our answer is number four. <clears throat> number four. This may look daunting, but it is not. It's quite easy. The graph of f of x is shown. Which function could represent the graph of f of x? First, we want to look at this y-intercept. We know that the y-intercept would be y equals a cubed plus b squared x squared plus cx plus d. This d right here is going to be the y-intercept. So we see that d over here is negative 8. So if we quote-unquote FOIL, or just distribute as I like to say because FOIL doesn't always make sense, we see that this plus 2 and minus 4 equals a negative 8 and this minus 2 plus 4 equals a negative 8. So we can eliminate 2 and 3 because we know this has to be negative 8. Secondly, we can look at our x-intercepts. We see that our x-intercept is 1, x equals 1, negative 2, and negative 4. If we look at question 1, or answer 1 and 4, we know that the x plus 2 equals 0, and our x equals negative 2, because of the zero product rule. Well, this x minus 2 equals 0, x equals 2. And we can see that negative 2 is one of our x-intercepts, so it must be x equals negative 2, which gives us the answer of 1. Because x plus 2 gives you a y-intercept of x equals negative 2. And then when you distribute this 2 to this negative 4, it gets negative 8 which is a y-intercept. So the answer is 1. Lastly, number 5. The cost of a pack of chewing gum in a vending machine is 75 cents. The cost of a bottle of juice in the same machine is $1.25. She has $22 to spend. So that equals something. And she's only going to buy chewing gum and bottles of juice, which we know the price is up. She must buy seven packs of chewing gum. So it's going to be seven times 0.75 because chewing gum is 75 cents. She has seven. Uh, she must buy seven packs of chewing gum. And then we don't know the bottles of juice, which is going to be represented by B. B represents the number of bottles of juices, which inequality represents the maximum number of bottles she can buy. So this must be a dollar twenty-five B. So we want an inequality, so we can't have an equal sign. If she can only spend at twenty-two dollars, we know that it has to be less than or equal because she cannot go over twenty-two dollars. That's a big no-no. So it cannot be one or three. And if we're going to add them together, and we know 7 times 70.75 is the chewing gum, because she needs 7, and it's 75 cents, we have our equation. $22 is less than or equal to 7 times 0.75 plus 1.25b, which gives us the answer of 4. And we should probably write this 22 on the side. It's technically wrong if it's on the same. And that is question one through five.